Warning, the following video contains strong language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Who's got kids? Give us a shout. Who hasn't got kids? What are you saying half of you? <laughs> Which is weird because we're not trying to get anyone to join our gang. People with kids never stop going on about it, especially when you're my age. People with kids, join us! <laughs> join us! <laughs> We're so happy. <laughs> you don't look happy, you look tired. <laughs> join us! <laughs> Who's gonna take care of you when you're old? <laughs> Medical professionals. <laughs> I've got to go now, I've got to have 12 hours sleep. <laughs> Not even tired. <laughs> Of course, the pill revolutionised the way that women control their bodies. Before its invention, our poor nanas had to take it up the wrong one. <laughs> or face falling down the stairs. In a hot bath, drunk on gym with a coat hanger chaser. <laughs> My best friend's wife is, uh, is having a baby, uh, and I asked him, I said, what do you want, a boy or a girl? And he thought about it, he said, I want a blowjob. <laughs> Really mournful. <laughs> I like getting a blowjob off the missus. I don't know if you get this. I don't know if you get a blowjob off my missus, but <laughs> the thing I like about oral sex with my partner, I think the thing most men enjoy about oral sex with my partner is not anything sexual, ladies. It's the peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, if you've ever been going down on a guy and he's gone, ah, oh, ah, oh, that's not your technique. That's not the sound of his sexual ecstasy. That is the sound of a man not being asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> I would think about adoption. I don't have kids, but if I had kids, I think I would have them adopted. <laughs> People criticise Madonna, but the kids she adopted, fair trade. <laughs> <laughs> have we got any dads in? Give us a shout all the dads. Did you cry at the birth of your first child? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Very few of you admitting it. A lot of guys are embarrassed by the fact they cried at the birth of their first child. I think it's because they don't quite know why they cried. There's different theories. Some people think it's the biological bond with the child that you meet for the first time. But that can't be it. You're only meeting it for the first time. It's not like the mother that's been carrying inside her. That's more of a biological thing. With the guy, mm, no. Some people think men cry at the birth of their first child because of the gift that's been bestowed on them by the woman in their life. That would make them tear up? No. I think the real reason most men cry at the birth of their first child is because they see what the little shit's done to the missus. <laughs> oh, no. She's <laughs> got a vaginus. <laughs> if my grandmother knew how much I spent on her funeral, she would be spinning in her ditch. When I was a kid, I didn't want to imagine my parents having sex, so I'd watch them from the wardrobe. <laughs> Can closet gay agrophobics ever come out? <laughs> How can you possibly explain the concept of death to a young child? Well, you need a hammer and a hamster. <laughs> He's not gone to live on a farm, has he? He's all over the fucking job. <laughs> It always feels so much better when you have a wank with a dead arm, but apparently I ruined that funeral. Oh. <laughs> I remember in the playground, my dad's harder than your dad. It's not really the issue. The issue is both our dads have erections in a playground. Researchers have created a contraceptive pill that deactivates sperm before it reaches the womb. My girlfriend's got something similar called stomach acid. <laughs> 10% oh. <laughs> of women have cried in a shop changing room. I guess they weren't expecting to see me there. Here's an interesting fact. The reason Morris dancers wear bells is so blind people know they're cunts too. <laughs> <laughs> I 
They say a problem shared is a problem halved. Didn't really work with AIDS, did it? <laughs> Do you know you can get AIDS from a toilet seat? But only if you sit down before the last guy's got up. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend asked me recently, she said, what's happened to your sex drive? I said, I burnt it and smashed it with a hammer. I was worried the police were going to get hold of it. <laughs> Humans and dolphins are the only mammals that have sex for pleasure, but a dog will do it for a biscuit. <laughs> if you suffocate in a bag for life, You'd be fucking livid, wouldn't you? <laughs> the irony would kill you. Um, I recently read Great Expectations, and it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I can do a brilliant Michael Jackson impersonation. Would you, would you like to see it? Yeah. Right, I just need a young volunteer that can keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> you know those human statues you get in the middle of town? You know the ones painted silver and gold, stand stock still? And then if you give them like 50 people when you walk past, they move their hand like a fraction. <laughs> it actually works out cheaper if you're going to go past them every day just to buy a taser. <laughs> I had a thing happen in the high street the other day. You know the charity muggers? You know the ones with the clipboard and the optimism in the, in the high street? <laughs> I dodged two of the cunts and the third one got me with what I considered to be an unfair tactic, the backwards walk and talk. So I hadn't stopped, I hadn't made eye contact, and she told me her sad story as she trotted along backwards. <laughs> and the wording was just perfect for me. She said, you know how often people die from AIDS? I said, I'm not an expert, but I'm guessing just the once. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an extraordinary anti-AIDS thing recently. I was in Johannesburg last year doing some gigs, and I saw in Johannesburg this charity had printed a leaflet with everything you need to know about HIV and AIDS, because there's a lot of myths about AIDS in South Africa. So they print up this leaflet, and because they raised more money than they needed, they decided to attach a condom to every leaflet. Good idea. So they stapled a condom. <laughs> Genuinely true, the Everest of fuckwittery. <laughs> it's weird, that, are there any South Africans in? Oh, there's quite a few. Well, it's weird the linguistic differences you notice when you travel. Like, like in this country, when you say, I'm not racist, what you tend to mean is, I'm not a racist. In South Africa, <laughs> when someone says, I am not a racist, it means they're about to say something fucking racist. <laughs> Is this racist? Do Chinese people have guess who? <laughs> I tried that joke for the first time in a tiny little 50-seater theatre above a pub, and there was a Chinese lady front and centre, and she laughed enough that she sort of bent forward, and it looked like I'd gone, no. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely weird. I like, to think I'm, I like to think of myself as an equal opportunities offender. I like to think I offend everyone and therefore no one, because it's kind of a blanket bombing approach to offence. It's like I'm not picking on any group, and also I'm not really making any points, am I? I'm just trying to make you laugh for a couple of hours. That's my only job in this world. I'm not trying to make any points or change anyone's mind about anything. And the best offence of a joke is always, it's just a joke. I was only joking. Relax, I'm just trying to make you giggle. When you try and say something that's true, earnestly, from the heart, that's when it can fuck up much more spectacularly in your face. I've got a story about this. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. It's a story about PC blowing up in a friend's face. So this mate of mine, it's quite a long story, which is unusual for me, but it's a doozy, you'll enjoy it. This mate of mine runs a comedy club, okay, at a university. He's in his mid-60s now, he's been running it since the early 80s, it's a legendary club. Anyway, runs this thing, he's quite a right-on kind of guy. If there's a petition to sign, he's signing it and forwarding the email to me. If there's a march to go on, he's on the march. Very right-on, political, involved kind of guy. Anyway, he runs this comedy club. This incident happened about 12 years ago. He decided to put on a night of American stand-up comedy. There happened to be three American stand-ups in London the same weekend. Okay? So he decided, well, instead of just booking one of them, I'll book all three of them. We'll make it like a themed evening, like the 4th of July. We'll get hot dogs and Budweiser and what have you. It'll be fun. So everyone comes to the evening. There's like 300 people in the club, and he's all excited about it. The first act goes up on stage. He's a black American stand-up out of New York City, and he does what I would refer to as an Uncle Tom routine. Uh, if you're not familiar with the terminology, that means he did a racist routine. All his jokes were based on negative, racist stereotypes. He got away with it. He was a very charismatic performer. He was very handsome. But the material was 
it was terrible. I mean, it was like, at best, it was uh, white guys drive like this and black guys drive like this. Nonsense, ill-observed nonsense. At worst, it was stuff that would make your skin crawl, okay? He totally got away with it that night. He got a big round of applause at the end of about half an hour set, and he walked back to the green room at the club, and my mate went in after him, and he went up to him, and he said, I want a word. You'll get paid for tonight's gig, there's no problem with that, but you would not be welcome back at my club telling those kind of jokes. I think it's racist, I think it's wrong. I don't think it's okay for you to tell racist jokes just because you're a black guy. I think if anything, you should know better. I think it denigrates the struggle of the African American people. And you can never say that no one's told you so, because I'm telling you so right now, it's racist and it's wrong. And the comedian went, I agree. When you're right, you're right. But I'm the other black comic, I haven't been on yet. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs>